If you want to get in the competitive space that is freelance video editing, you're going to need your skill set to at least be able to handle basic editing projects. So in this video, I am giving you my tips on how to improve your video editing skills. Let's get into it. Keep your left hand on the keyboard. This is assuming, of course, that you are right-handed. So right hand on the mouse, left hand on the keyboard at all times, preferably. It may feel strange when you're first starting out and feel kind of pointless, especially if you don't know any shortcuts. So you feel like there's really no reason for your hand to be there. But the goal is ultimately that you will be learning shortcuts and slowly implementing them. For me, a big part of that was learning the muscle memory of using those shortcuts instead of the first muscle memory that I had, which was just clicking around with my mouse to do my editing. I had to kind of force myself to start using those shortcuts if I wanted to eventually get faster at video editing. So the goal and ideal situation would be that your left hand is hitting shortcuts as your right hand is moving around clips, clicking on whatever it needs to. And so I see video editing as a two-handed job. It can of course be done with one hand, but preferably it is a two-handed job if you want to be at the right speed to be able to start competing with other freelance video editors. Start analyzing. More than likely, if you want to be a video editor, hopefully you were inspired in some way by a movie you saw or a show that you like or a YouTuber that you are watching. There's a reason that you started to think, oh, cool, I like watching movies and I like the editing. Maybe I could be a video editor. Whatever started your interest in video editing, I think it's important to start analyzing shows, movies, YouTube videos that you like and thinking about what you like about them. If you're watching this video right now, what do you like about this video? What do you like about how it's edited? What do you like specifically about the editing that you can then try to replicate on your own in your own projects? As someone who went to a film school, it was kind of in our nature as students to do a lot of studying of movies. And we studied all parts of them. We studied the narrative end, we studied the sound design end, we studied the video editing end. We studied really all around what made those movies great movies, but I'm very practical. And I like to think, how can you study something specifically in your mind to think, I need to try and replicate that for my own projects. So the next time you are sitting on Netflix or watching a movie, try to start actually analyzing what you're watching and exactly why you like the editing in that movie. If we haven't met yet, I am Colleen. And in this channel, I teach you how to get a video editing job and how to get paid doing what you love. So for more tips on that and to support my channel, I'd so appreciate it if you can hit the like button below and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Watch tutorials as needed. Yes, ultimately, if you're going to learn how to do video editing, you're gonna need to watch some semblance of tutorials when you're first getting started. You need to learn what software you're going to get, how to work that software, how to actually put clips together and edit them, how to use the specific shortcuts and tools within the platform to get the most out of your video editing. So in the beginning, you're gonna be watching more tutorials than you normally would. However, I've said this before and I will say it again, I don't think you should watch too many tutorials. And by that, I mean, I think it can be easy to get caught up in watching so many tutorials that you end up learning too much with no practical way to implement those things that you learned. And if you're anything like me, all of that information that you learned is going to go in one ear and out the other because you don't have a practical way to implement it. When I was first starting to learn how to edit, I specifically was learning so that I could create things. Like I I wanted to create a slideshow or I wanted to create a very specific project or in high school, I wanted to create this movie. So I needed to learn the steps to do that on Premiere. I had actual prompts or projects I wanted to get done and I learned video editing to support that. And so I could get those projects done. It wasn't a matter of, I need to learn video editing so that I could be a great, amazing video editor and make a million dollars video editing. It just started a lot smaller than that. You know what I mean? And then when I got my first internship, I still wasn't very good at video editing. And it was, hey, edit this project. Okay, I need to use the skills that I have and edit this project. And if there is something 
something I don't know, I will look up tutorials for that specific thing and then directly implement it into the project that I'm editing. So basically to sum this up, don't get too caught up in the little specific tutorials you could be watching. Focus more on actually creating purposeful projects for yourself, whether that be a job or an internship or just a passion project that you're trying to do, and then watch tutorials as needed to get that project done. Expand your medium and your niche. What do I mean by that? Well, first let's talk about the medium because I do have a lot of people that will reach out to me and they'll say, what platform should I use? How should I be editing my content? And to that I say, we don't care. Let me tell you. It's not that I don't care, but it doesn't quite matter when you're a beginner beginner, how you are doing your editing, as long as you are learning the concepts of editing. And there is a lot of benefit to practicing video editing on different platforms. I think learning how to edit on TikTok is almost just as valuable, if not as valuable as learning to edit on Premiere. I don't think that one platform is more important than the other. I think they're all different in different ways. And especially if you are in the social media niche, you should be using TikTok and CapCut and free platforms to do your video editing because one, it's free and two, it's in demand. So why wouldn't you wanna be using those platforms so you learn how to edit in the same style of everybody else that's using those platforms. Now, putting social media aside, if you want to learn cinematic editing, okay, then great. Google what platforms you should be using. And ultimately there are different benefits to working on any of the platforms, Premiere, DaVinci, Avid, Final Cut, Sony Vegas. It's not a bad idea to one, First of all, start on the free platform wherever you can get it. And two, experiment on different platforms so that you can get an idea of which platform you like editing on versus what is annoying to you. Maybe this will be very telling of what kind of video editor you end up being. So definitely try experimenting with your medium. I also wanna add experimenting with your niche is just as important because you may be thinking, I want to be the next great cinematic editor because that's all you've ever really seen. And so you, that's all you think is really out there. When in reality, video editing niches are really vast. And it was surprising to me after I learned how many niches were out there. It was crazy because I learned just how accessible video editing really was to me. When at first I thought, hmm, if I can't get a job in New York or LA as a video editor, then I just can't be a video editor. Of course, that was pre-COVID days before everything was remote now, but now everything is remote. And so you can be an editor editing for somewhere across the globe. You can be a content creator editing for yourself. You can be working with all different kinds of companies in various niches, corporate, gaming, sports, UGC, social media, weddings, nonprofits, independent films. That's so vast as a video editor anymore because really everybody needs video. And if you need video, you more than likely need video editing. Consider paid learning platforms. I was interviewed a few weeks ago by a budding video editor and he asked me if I would recommend using paid platforms like Skillshare and Udemy. And I gave him a very honest answer. And this is as someone who has classes on Skillshare. I wanted to give him a very honest answer and basically say it depends. For a skill such as video editing that is so widely accessible in terms of tutorials on YouTube, it seems silly to think that that you should then pay for basically more of the same things on Skillshare or Udemy. There is a benefit to using platforms like Skillshare and that benefit is the same benefit if you were to buy any online course and that is a sense of accountability. Maybe you don't wanna go to film school or pay for college, but you do want to consider an actual career as a video editor and you want to commit yourself to actually learning the video editing process and learning how to be a great video editor. Well, there is some level of if you purchase a Skillshare or Udemy membership, you're then committing to yourself financially that you are going to watch the tutorials, you are going to watch all those classes, and you are going to commit to learning it. Versus if you are just taking up video editing as a hobby, and you like the idea of video editing, and you want to eventually get paid to be a video editor, but I'll just watch some tutorials on YouTube, and it'll be fine 
by and I'll learn it super fast. But you saying that you're gonna watch tutorials and you actually sitting down and watching them maybe are two very different things. So it really depends on what kind of person you are. And so there is value of having a Skillshare membership. And then there's the other side where both of those platforms can be a complete waste of time and money because you can do all of that on YouTube. You just have to search for things a little bit differently and you may need to watch a little bit more videos in a slightly more disorganized way than you would on platforms like Skillshare. So to sum that all up, consider using those platforms, but consider them wisely and realistically if they'll actually help you learn video editing faster or if they're just gonna be a waste of your money. Now, if you are liking this video and it is helping you at all, again, I'd so appreciate it if you can hit the like button below so this video can spread to more people. And speaking of Skillshare, um, yeah, I have some classes on there actually. So if you don't mind checking those out, seeing if that floats your boat, I have a link down in the description for a free trial of Skillshare and you can find that again in the description below. So definitely check that out. Take on more challenging clients. A great way to improve your skills as a video editor is to literally be forced to do so by the clients you are working with. For me, again, personally, I learned video editing by being involved in video editing projects that required me to learn them. So it was project or job first and then learn skills afterward. And I really think back to when I got a job at a marketing company here and they needed a lot of social media video editing done and I had really never done that before. And so they hired me, which was great, but I really came a long way in the two years that I was working for them where I had to really pick up how to edit for social media. I had to edit very differently than I normally did. And I had to adapt very quickly. More than likely, I wouldn't have learned social media as quickly and also fallen in love with it so quickly if it wouldn't have been for that job. And really the same goes with any video editing job that I get. To some degree, I'm always improving my video editing with every client that I take. I don't necessarily have the best skills when I first take on that client. It's as I grow with them and I use them as a way to grow as a video editor. Now, for a lot of you, this is a huge problem because finding a job as a video editor is the main problem. And if you really are truly struggling to find a client to help you improve your skills, you may need to start thinking more creatively of how you're going to step up and continue to grow as a video editor, even if you can't get a client. Maybe that means taking on more passion projects and free projects. Maybe that means taking an unpaid internship. I'm not necessarily saying that's the best way or only ways that you can do this. I always think that getting paid for your services is the best route to go. But since it is such a competitive space in the video editing world right now, if you're not growing with it, you're just gonna keep slowly falling behind. So definitely any way that you can keep challenging yourself and taking on more challenging projects and clients, the better of a video editor you're gonna become. Constantly ask questions. And this doesn't necessarily mean ask people, like other people questions. This more means constantly asking yourself as you are do 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 video editing along, is there a faster way that I can be doing this? Maybe you could constantly find yourself in your timeline with a ton of B-roll that you're looking through and you're finding yourself always finding a piece of B-roll, but then you need to find the rest of that B-roll. And is there a faster way that I can be doing this? Yes. There is, more than likely, in Premiere anyways, there is a faster way you can be doing almost anything. But the only way that you're going to grow and improve as a video editor is if you are curiously just always asking yourself that, oh, is there a faster way I can be doing this, rather than just sitting with the current way that you are doing your video editing. Challenging the software that you are using is an important part, I think, is one of the most important parts to grow as a video editor, because we are really nothing without out the software. And so we need to be able to utilize our software to the best of its abilities, whether that be CapCut or Premiere Pro or Final Cut, whatever you're using, that software should be pushed to its limits so that you can edit the project that you want to edit in the fastest and most efficient way possible. So next time you're sitting around video editing something, just try and always keep that question in your mind. Is there a faster way I can be doing this? Or what else can my platform be doing for me. Practice constantly. 
It's a very simple idea, but it needs to be said. Just like in my whole rant about taking on more challenging clients, I don't think you get any better as a video editor if you are not constantly practicing. And that may mean giving yourself your own prompts or ideas or projects so that you have a very specific idea of the thing that you want to edit together. And you can use tutorials to learn what you need to learn, to implement it practically into your project, your editing, and then you can edit it better every single time and that you can use that practice to ultimately grow as a video editor. You're not gonna get anywhere unless you are constantly practicing. In my career as a video editor, there have even been times where I haven't edited for a client in a while and then they'll come back and I'll do a project for them. And I even feel kind of rusty on that particular project and how to edit it because I haven't been editing for them in a while and I kind of almost forget how to edit their project. For me, there is a huge amount of muscle memory that goes into perfecting the video editing skill and that can only be perfected by practicing constantly. So there you have it. I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts below. If you are using any of these tips to currently grow as a video editor, if you have your own tips on how to improve video editing, I would love to hear about them. So definitely comment below. And if you haven't already checked out this video as well to improve as a video editor, definitely check that out. Thank you to my team. Again, I am Colleen and I will catch you guys in the next video. Have the best one.